A deep fake typically refers to a video that has been edited to replace the person in the original video with someone else, commonly a public figure, in a way that makes a video look entirely authentic. These are time-consuming to make, but can be very convincing. Today's guest is Lonnie Waugh. Lonnie is a web developer, software engineer, and deepfake creator. He has been doing deepfake videos for years with a sense of humor, traditionally using the name One Duality on Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube. I'm your host, Chris Parker, and this is the Easy Prey Podcast. Lonnie, thank you so much for coming on the Easy Prey Podcast today. Uh, my pleasure. Thanks for having me. So I know you've got a, uh, a YouTube channel where you've uh, made a number of uh, deep fakes recently and over the last, what, how long, how many years has it been? Uh, it's two or three years, I think. The last couple of years. Yeah. So, for, so for the audience who's not familiar, can you explain what a deep fake is? Uh, a deep fake is, and they're pretty popular now, you'll see them. It's basically where you'll see like a scene from a movie or something like that or, you know, a, a political speech. And you'll see their face replaced with something else, in my case, just to make it more humorous. So uh, I'll do a polit politician and I'll put like Mr. Bean, uh, Rowan Atkins' face on top of it. Or I'll put them in a, like put a, put a politician into the scene from Terminator or something like that. Uh, it, it's basically just using artificial intelligence to remap somebody else's face onto someone else's in a believable way. So it, you know, I, I I could think you know ten years ago this would have been you know cray computers in a in a in a massive <laughs> facility, and it sounds like people are actually able to start doing this sort of thing from their home now. They can. It's a bit of a process, but you need to have the right hardware too. You have to have an NVIDIA GPU. I think there's some uh, software that will work with AMD hardware, but. For the most part, NVIDIA has got it just because the, the, the cores are much faster and, and kind of geared toward that artificial intelligence. So, so, so what kind of hard, so what is like the total hardware that's needed for someone to be able to do this now? I'm using a 2080 Ti and that can still take days um, to get, you know, just something decent looking. Uh, if you want something to look really professional, it could take a week or two because um, there's a lot of revision. If you, and that's the most frustrating part is if you render this thing out and then you find that you got a blurred face or something here, you really kind of have to go through and find the frames that are causing that or find the section, maybe even reclip the section and, mm -hmm. and start over again. Um, but yeah, a 2080 Ti is, is what I use. You can actually go lower than that. Um, but I wouldn't advise it. it the, the key thing is VRAM, though. Um, you can do it with as low as 8 gigabytes of VRAM, but I, I, higher than that is better. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, like, can you go through, like, what the process is, uh, without getting too technical, <laughs> the, what, <laughs> what the process is that you need, like, you know, what kind of source material do you need, what kind of videos do and don't work to be able to create a deep fake? Well, for me, it always starts with figuring out the scene that I want to use first. And that's going to have to be something, I mean, just, just to make it easier for me. It doesn't have to be, um, but it can mean the dif difference between a day or two or a week or two. Mm -hmm. um, but that's going to be a scene that tries to stay face on as much as possible with consistent lighting. Um, so I, I, that's where I kind of started getting into the political stuff is because it's like a press conference. They're facing the camera. They may look left or right a little bit. One of the biggest problems is if somebody looks too far left or too far right, the facial recognition won't pick it up. Mm -hmm. Kind of like your face ID. If you're looking at it with your cheek facing the camera, it's probably not going to know who you are. Um, so that's how I do it. Um, and then I'll go find the face that I want to replace it with. And that's kind of where it takes the most time. Mm -hmm. Because let's say I do want to use a Rowan Atkins and I have to go through movies that I have or online interviews or, you know, trailers or, you know, just any anything I can get and, and kind of hodgepodge it together. It doesn't have to have audio. It doesn't even have to make sense. It just has to be a, a clip with all of these scenes in it. And by all the scenes, you mean kind of. A little bit of the head tilts, the yeah, mouth open and closed, eyes open and closed. Right, up, down, left, right, 
but yeah. So it's got to have all that stuff. It doesn't necessarily have to have it. It, it needs to have what's in the destination. Mm-hmm. So if I have a straight on shot of a politician, I don't need the left and right and all of that. I just need the straight on and maybe a little bit of left and a little bit up and down just for extra coverage. Mm-hmm. Um, but if I'm going to do it, I tend to tend to get it all. That way I can reuse that face set later. Gotcha. Um, once you have that, there's, you know, I do some some pre-processing just to make sure that, you know, color matching and stuff like that, that again, you don't have to. The software can actually try to do that, but I found it's it's better to give it a good head start. So I'll take it in my, my software and I'll just do some color matching, get mm-hmm. make sure everything's fairly consistent. And then you run it through the software, it'll clip out the faces. It'll it'll do facial recognition and turn everything into frames. And then you have to go through and look at these frames one by one and try to get rid of blurry ones or ones where sometimes it'll think that it's a face when it's not. It's just a curtain in the background. Or it will identify a face, but it'll turn it sideways. That's just a junk frame. You can toss it. And it's, you can't do that on the destination video. Like you can only do it on your source, so like Mr. Bean. Mm-hmm. You could do it on that, but if I'm replacing a politician, I can't do that with a politician. You, you don't want but, eyes showing up in the curtains in the background. No, it, it'd be weird. You, and so you can manually go in there and try to correct things. But usually at that point, I'm just like, you know, it's easier for me to just go find another clip. Mm-hmm. But that's me. Uh, and I deal with more stuff than just me. So sometimes you don't have that level of authority. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so are, is the other software packages that allow you to do this commercially available, free, you know, open source, easily available? Open source. Mm-hmm. It's available for Linux and for Windows. That I, last I checked, they still don't have a Mac version. And know the uh, and and a lot of that has to do with the fact that most Macs don't have NVIDIA GPUs, mm-hmm. so there's the developers not going to waste his time trying to keep it supported, and people are going to ask questions. Why doesn't it work on this? Yes, you can get an NVIDIA GPU on certain machines, but it's just not worth it. So you would need a PC or you'd need uh, a Linux box. Mm-hmm. And so I know I've seen. Uh some deep fakes out there done uh, with the kind of the, the source material was a uh, an impersonator for the person that they wanted to use. Yep, I've, I've done one of those. That, that's always good. And, and so that a really, so it wasn't a, you know, taking a well-known politician and a speech that they've done, but they're, you know, were able to create the source material from scratch uh, on, on something like that. And it, and it makes me wonder, like, do you see the day coming when, uh, you know, deep fakes will be almost indistinguishable from real material? Since I've been doing this for so long, I, my immediate gut reaction is that's a long ways off just because I know what to look for. But mm-hmm. if you don't know what you're looking for, it's it's very easy to be fooled. So, so, um, so, what, so you're talking about you know what to look for in the, the, the produced material, Correct. Correct. So what, I mean, I've been looking at it for so long. It's hard. To, I knew you were going to ask me what, <laughs> but um, it's just that I've been looking at it for so long that I know the little nuances and, and things like that. It's hard to explain it. It's just one of those things that you do it so long, you just kind of get used to it. Oh, that, that's a that's a deep fake. It could just be a little blemish or a little flicker or something. Just just something that nobody else would notice when the light changes or something like that. It, it causes the some sort of facial. T- not really a tick, but it's just something that's noticeably off to me. You're, you're, it, it's it's kind of one of those uh, uncanny valley. <laughs> not really. <laughs> I, I, I'm going to make a, a, a horrible comparison that hopefully won't draw draw flack. Is you see like a, a lot of the, the the grainy UFO videos, let's say, or the or the the, the Bigfoot videos that those those telltale signs of the angles not right the uh, Something overlaps incorrectly. I'll say that it, skin tone that, is suddenly off. Yeah, it's it's more like that. Like the the tone will be off suddenly. It'll shift because they're obviously using multiple face sets, mm-hmm. and so you'll notice that maybe their face set maybe they they have uh, something from a dark setting 
that, you know, somebody did a sit down interview on 60 minutes or something like that. And it's usually dark and comfortable. And then the other one is from an outside press conference in the sun. Mm -hmm. Well, you can pick that up. Um, it's so quick though, that a lot of people won't notice it, but I, I can spot those pretty quickly. So for me, I, I, I'll be able to tell, but I, I would say that if I showed something like that to pretty much anybody else who's not used to deepfake, they would probably not notice a thing. It's the sort of thing they you, would they would think it would be like an artifact, or is that kind of what they would look like to most people? It's just kind of like a compression artifact. Not even that. It's um, or is it more have, subtle? It's it's, it's more subtle. Mm-hmm. You had it right with the kind of tone. It's just a flash of something different, and it's just so quick. There's, it's actually in my videos, too. I mean, it's hard to get rid of that kind of thing, and it's really not worth – like I said, I, I can't monetize my channel because of some of the content that I use. So for me, it's not worth spending the many hours that it would take to iron it out. But for some projects that I've done, um, that's something that has to happen. Now, I, I do – I'm not going to say who who or what, but I did do a music video where that's very evident – and the reason that is is because the director they knew they wanted to do a deep fake. Mm-hmm. They didn't consult with a deep fake artist before they did it. So they didn't know the ins and outs and what what to do and what not to do. And so they were going from indoors to outdoors to, you know, bright light, dim light, fast movements. It ha- it did everything wrong. Mm-hmm. Um and I've done a couple things like that. But yeah, it it things like that are the nose. So, so it's almost like it's uh, deep, deep fakes and, and, the, and the process is almost perfectly designed for politicians making political speeches inside. Well, in my case, yeah. Um, there, now, there are some people that are quite good at it because they actually have like sponsorships. Mm-hmm. So they can get free cloud computing with this massive network of GPUs and they can knock this stuff. They can process it for much, much longer um, and, and get better results. But, you know, I don't, I'm, I, I'm doing this for my own entertainment for the most part, other than those, those occasional projects like music video I've done, not a commercial yet, but music videos, I've had YouTubers contact me to, to do stuff with them. One of them is, is one I don't even mind mentioning because they, they actually got me started, but it's, um, are you familiar with uh, song of the news? Shmo Yoho? I'm somewhat familiar with it. Okay. I've d- that's kind of where I got my boost because we did that. And it was a learning process with them because we did some – they do a lot of political stuff. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I made some mistakes and, and they made some mistakes in filming some things. And so we, you just kind of learn as you go. We'll make sure to uh, include a link. To, I assume that's up on YouTube currently? Oh, yeah. yeah. So I we'll guess. make sure to include uh, uh, a link to that video in the show notes for this. Yeah, and I'll be sure to let them know anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, they should have some credit. They're they're amazing guys. Cool. Uh, so so we're talking about like you know the the source material having to be kind of a, a similar to what your destination material is. How much source material, source video, do you need to create something that's even starts to become plausible? I, I at a bare minimum, I would say you want to get out to be. 3000 frames. Um, and, and you can choose what, what kind of the number of frames you want to export. So it could be a two minute long video Mm -hmm. and then you export as many frames as you think is necessary, which like I said, the minimum would be 3000. I try to go around 10 to 15,000 takes longer to train it. And by training, I mean the model has, or the system has to go through and look at each frame over and over and over again and try to learn how to map on to what you're wanting it to map onto. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's doing it both at the same time. It's learning their face and it's learning this face and it's trying, it knows that this is who you're trying to map onto. So it's looking for facial similarities and sometimes it'll, you know, it'll morph your source frames a little bit. So for one of the, uh, politicians, not naming anything, (laughs) um, it took, my character and had to expand its face a mm. bit. So, so you do get a little bit of the, that morphing there, but it's so subtle that you can't really tell. And I suppose it's, you know, if your, your, your source character and your 
and and the face that you're trying to map them onto are similar shaped faces. I'm sure it helps tremendously. Uh, you know, if you're trying to uh, shift people from different ethnicities, it's not going to work or different, uh, significantly different facial shapes. Uh, the ethnicity doesn't really come into play, um, but facial shape does. I, 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 I've taken people of different races and have been able to merge them in, into a, a new video, and it actually worked out quite well. Hmm. To my surprise, yeah, that would surprise. I didn't me. think I didn't think that was going to work, but the uh, built-in color matching that's in the system is actually smart enough to handle that. So that usually works out pretty well in my experience. Now, if you were to try to take the Incredible Hulk <laughs> and do that, you could, but you're going to have to. Have, there's there's a lot of nuance to that because there's different models, like different modes mm -hmm. that you can work with. They each have their pluses and minuses and so you're, you may you may get the coloring that you want, but you might lose something else out of it. You might lose some fidelity. You might, you know, could be something like that. I've done, uh, I turned a little girl into Ron Swanson. Somebody else did the same thing, but uh, Disney, or not Disney, but somebody, no. Yeah, it wasn't Disney. It was the, the little girl was on uh, Sesame Street. Mm -hmm. And they came after him. So I took mine down. But then I later put mine back up and I just didn't advertise it. <laughs> so mine still exists, I believe. Yeah, it's, it's uh, always challenging if someone is able to identify the source material. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it's quite obvious. Okay. <laughs> uh, it's for entertainment purposes only. Exactly. I mean, that, and that's what I, I, as far as I'm concerned, that would be like a fair use, just entertainment. Mm -hmm. So, But I don't know. I don't make those laws. We are not lawyers here, and we are not giving legal advice to anyone listening. No, no, absolutely not. <laughs> so do, do you see, like, if I were a, a notable person and I wanted to do my best to make sure that my likeness could not be used uh, in deep fakes, is that even a, a possibility? Uh, you could have... I mean, if you're not a politician, because a politician, you're pretty much in the public domain. But mm -hmm. um, if you're like a, a Tom Cruise or something like that, if you have enough legal backing, you can go try to find them one by one and take them down. And you're not there, there's always going to be another one to pop up. It's kind of like a weed. If you take one down, you're going to have 20 more. I, I guess so, it was the the, the, I, the the bigger point was. Uh, you know how likely it is that non celebrities that there's enough source material to to build a deep fake based off of uh, their face if they're a non celebrity yes how so, easy would it be to, to yeah. well yeah that you couldn't do it with you could kind of do it with photos but you'd have to have thousands of photos mm -hmm. um you would have to have you'd want to have video um so you know let's say somebody was a podcaster no. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it would be pretty easy, especially because you're straight on. Yeah. Um, so, you know, things like that. It, it, it would be very easy in that kind of situation. There's a lot of people who jump on YouTube wanting to become YouTube stars. If I wanted to do something like that, I could. Mm -hmm. um, but your average Joe, it, I'd have to have something. And, and I couldn't just have a few pictures or something like that. There'd have to be a, a, a pretty decent size video or something like that. And it would also have to be of decent quality. Mm -hmm. And there's not a lot of high quality videos of stuff like that around, I guess. But yeah, I mean, it's particularly if you're trying to do something more than just uh, put their face on somebody else's body. Right. It's, it's the, I, I think the thing that people fear is that, that combination of getting someone who is a, a close physical resemblance of who they're trying to impersonate and they can do a, a good voice impersonation. Now they can go around and walk and talk and say things and overlay the real person's face on them. And it becomes a lot more indistinguishable. Well, to you, it's probably noticeable, but I think to a lot of people it become <laughs> not noticeable. Is that really who it, who it looks like? Yeah. There's actually people that do that um, on one of the, I'm not going to, pimp any social network here um but there there is one that uh, there, there's actually an app that that does it but it's it's 
it looks very good, but it's juddery and it's very obviously not them. Mm-hmm. But they do have a very well-known uh, person who's a, a great impressionist, and they they he does it all the time. Yeah. Um. So some people, I mean, you could say he's he's a little bit of an overactor, but something like that is theoretically possible. If he knew how to use the software I use and did the same thing to better effect, mm-hmm. he could easily probably fool somebody. Yeah, I, I think that's what people are ultimately scared of when they start seeing things. So like, you know, if you if it's a if a celebrity's face on a politician, you're like, oh, ha ha ha, that's funny. But they fear that, like, well, at some point, is someone gonna, you know, produce a video of me saying something inappropriate, and I'm gonna lose my job over it? Very unlikely, unless you're posting videos of yourself all over the place with proper lighting and <laughs> you know that kind of thing. It, it's it's, but I mean, that's becoming more and more of a thing is people start posting on, mm-hmm. you know, social media video, um, these little 50 second video clips. I mean, they add up over, over a while. So if somebody keeps posting and posting and posting and posting, those can be clipped together. Then you have a face and then that face could be used to create a deep fake. If you had somebody who was willing to do an impre- or able to do an impression of the person that you're trying to do that to, uh, there's a lot of work involved in getting all that done, so it better be a, a worthwhile goal, I suppose. <laughs> yeah, a worthwhile venture. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's 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 not the sort of thing where uh, someone's going to uh, uh, produce, a, uh, take a video of their neighbor and try to blackmail them for a few thousand dollars. That's not going to oh, be. Oh no, 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 no. That's not going to be the reality for for By many, many years. Your temper is going to be worn off at that point. <laughs> After you spent three or four weeks trying to get this thing together, you're going to be like, ah, forget it. I mean, I, I suppose that's that's the good news is that while convincing ones could be made of celebrities, the amount of work that is currently has to go into it is pretty extensive. Yeah, it is, and you have to have the hardware, and and the hardware is pretty expensive right now. You know, GPU shortages and things like that. Yes. <laughs> um, but I, I, you know, again, I I say that 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 is as as of today. Yeah. Um, the deep fake technology has went leaps and bounds in the past three years. So who's to say, but, it, and there is software that does deep fakes with a single photo, but they're not believable at all. Yeah. It's just like somebody's taking a photo and morphing the photo to match a mouth movement. It just doesn't, it's, it's more of a goofy thing than anything else. It, it looks more like a celebrity face in an old time video game. Yeah, it, well, it looks like something. I don't know. What it, looks like. it looks like somebody just basically took a picture and then shoved their face through it and is just moving it around like it's made out of rubber or something. It's it's just a very weird effect. Yeah. It's it's not going to be – no no one's going to mistake that for the real individual. No, the only purpose it has is for comedy. People are making them sing goofy songs and it's just – beyond that, it's useless. <laughs> yeah, I, I know that there's like – you know the the thing that I that I see coming, and hopefully it's far enough in the future that there'll be other ways to prevent it from then. Before that happens, is these yeah. like romance scammers who are pretending to be somebody notable. They're not, you know, they're not a not a major celebrity, but they're pretending to be someone who's somewhat well known or kind of well known. Yeah, I mean, they could be looking at pulling video from a, a low budget. But hot, but well shot movie or something like that from an up and coming actor that nobody's ever heard of. Um, I'm sure I could see something like that. Um, there was one guy who was trying to get me to because he thinks he looks like Ryan Reynolds. I didn't trust it, but he was wanting me to do a uh, a video of him with Ryan Reynolds' face. Or no, he wanted Ryan Reynolds' face mapped onto him. So I was like, yeah, you can find somebody else to do that. Not, not <laughs> I'm not interested. Guilty. No, yeah, because there was a there was a a CEO that I had interviewed that his likeness was being used uh, for romance scams, and you know historically when I've talked to people who are who they think they're dealing with someone who's scamming them, it's like ah, get on a live video chat and you'll know right away because they're not going to get on the get on a video chat with you, and so he and I were talking about that, and what he said is that like some of these scammers because he had been on television news and he'd done a podcast and he'd done some video stuff that the scammers would play the video with the audio turned off. 
And they, um, you know, yeah. they'd start and stop the video, start and stop the video. They finally go, oh, you know, I, I have a bad internet connection. There's a, uh, a YouTuber. It's not. It's kind of related because he does the same thing, or he used to, but not not for romance scams. But he would take video clips and loop them of a you know just an attractive person. These clips were usually given to him, mm-hmm. and then the. The thing that he did is when people were really getting interested in looking at this, he would then flash up like a horror scene No, oh. <laughs> just to try to scare them. But it's the same kind of thing. And and actually what's funny is – it's not really funny, but they have a, an avatar system where you can have a, a celebrity's face or something like that. But they, these are celebrities that have kind of agreed to this kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And I don't think they're really big celebrities, but you can have them actually – it maps to your face. So they are your avatar. So it, you look like them and it's, it's convincing enough because it does slow it down. So it's like a bad internet connection kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So th- there is that. Um, and then they do have some that people are working on that just where you can make your own kind of like a deep fake. You train it, train it, train it. And then it actually does real time processing. It's not perfect. Uh, by far, mm-hmm. but it's people are trying to do it. Yeah, that's that's uh, the scary thing is you, at some point in the future we're not going to know who we're chatting with online. Well, there is a lot of uh, thought being put into that as far as legislation, yeah. social networks, and things like that, where they're talking about at least in the political world having some sort of embedded watermark that you cannot detect, so that they'll know if this is an official video or not. Yeah. If it doesn't have that watermark, you know that it's a deep fake or something. It's been modified, digitally yeah. modified in some way. At least there's cause for concern and it should not be taken, uh, necessarily taken for face value. Right. 100%. So hopefully, all, there, hopefully this all is many, of, many years out. Yeah, yeah. There is a lot of abuse of the technology, but uh, it's I haven't seen it in that, in that, that way. Not in the ways that you've brought up. Yeah. Well, that, that's that, that's good to know that you haven't seen that that is a uh, an ongoing issue, and, and hopefully it won't be for a while. No, the way it's been abused is predictable. Uh, I won't even have to get into that, but yeah, that that's one of the main problems. Yeah, and, and a lot of those, if, if celebrities' faces are being put on uh, on porn stars and things like that, there's there's – uh, hopefully good legal recourse for addressing those issues currently. I would hope so. I, or at least they're being worked on. I, I think one of the, when it comes to that, one of the big concerns was like girlfriend revenge porn type mm-hmm. stuff, taking your ex-girlfriend, you know, you recorded a video chat or something like that. And then you guys split up and now you're putting their video all over the place and getting them in trouble at school. As a matter of fact, I think there was a case in, uh, that went to court recently of a mother who did something like that or had something like that done to try to get this other girl kicked out of, of college or something like that. But do you know what I'm talking about? Uh, I, I don't remember the specific specifics of the case, but I am, there was a case where the mom, the mom got involved and it went South really bad. Yeah. I, and I, for some reason I was thinking it had something to do with that, but I could be wrong. Yeah, those those unfortunately exist out there. Uh, so as we wrap up here, if people want to uh, find your uh, deep fake videos, where can they find them? Uh, Instagram, One Duality. Um, I don't know if I, I mean I should have uh, thought about that because well, I think it's just youtubecom slash One Duality. I don't know if I actually got that name or not. I think I did because I've I've been on there for a long time. Yeah, so YouTube.com slash One Duality, um, Instagram.com slash One Duality. I'm also on. Uh, let's see, how do I think I, I I took the Facebook down because I wasn't using it, but also TikTok, and that's One Duality as well. Cool. We'll make sure to uh, link all of those in the show notes. And Lonnie, thank you so much for coming on the Easy Prey podcast today. Oh, no problem. It was a pleasure. 
Thank you for listening to this episode of the Easy Prey Podcast. If you found this episode interesting, please leave a review at easypray.com slash review. Notes and a transcript of this episode with Lonnie Waugh can be found at easypray.com slash 62.